Hi guys, welcome to Sosin IAS Academy. This is Hima Hegde presenting before you the current and contemporary affairs in anthropology. Let us look into the social impacts of urbanization. Urbanization is the gradual shift of the population from rural to urban areas and the resulting increasing proportion of a population that resides in urban rather than rural places now there could be multiple social effects of urbanization firstly let's talk about urbanization and caste with urbanization and education development the caste identity and caste pride has diminished the network of urbanites comprise people from all castes instead class ties are more important than caste ties at the same time educated members of some of the caste groups come in together to make some kinds of pressure groups in urban areas however such pressure groups work like a social organization instead of caste st- structures in villages such groups also bring several subcastes together now we have urbanization and status of women the status of women in urban areas is higher in comparison to the rural areas and they are comparatively more educated and liberal they are not only aware of their economic social and political rights but also are able to exercise those rights average age of marriage of girls is higher in the cities There is a change observed in the working patterns of individual in the urban setup. The participation rate in the labor market has increased among the married women and they no longer are homemakers. However, urban women still face discrimination in labor market and face discrimination and have limited range of occupations. Still cities of India have low female. Now we have urbanization and village life urbanization development has led to the centrifugal movement of village people to the urban urban areas most people migrate to cities for employment and business at the same time rural residents and urban employment has resulted in the new type of lifestyle in rural urban fringe areas it has resulted in modification of social patterns as well as adjustments to a new way of life the rural people are influenced by urban life and don't lay undue emphasis on caste creed etc thus more liberal approach is seen in the village people now speaking of urbanization and family urbanization has affected family structure intra and interfamily relations as well as the functions of the family the urban joint family are being gradually replaced by nuclear families sizes of the families are shrinking and kinship relationships are getting confided to two or three generations only despite of changes in the family structure the spirit of individualism is not growing further the husband dominated family is being replaced by equalitarian family where wife is given a share in decision making process parents no longer impose their authority over children and children no longer blindly obey the commands of the parents even in joint families the eldest male consults with the children and this consultation is not formal urbanization as an agent of transformation and innovation cities are nodes of new ideas communication and innovation it spreads in immediate hinterlands as well as in the whole country through sustained urban rural links in asia cities have been termed the center of change this is largely due to the migrants returning home for short while from urban areas and spreading awareness among the rural villages encouraging to ad- them to adopt to some of the innovations already witnessed in urban areas this also helps in improved health and housing positive changes of attitudes 
aspirations, behavior, and personal relationships. All these transmissions and innovations have a lot to contribute. Firstly, improving the quality of life of urban populations, and secondly, enhancing the catalytic role, the catalytic role, or uh, in urban centers of urban centers in rural transformation and development. The sustained urban rural links is an important pipeline for the development of rural areas. Let us learn about the Rh factor. Blood typing is determined by the molecules on the surface of the red blood cells that is the RBCs. In general, we can classify someone's blood type by the absence or presence of A or B antigens and Rh factor on the surface of the blood cells. The most commonly recognized blood groups are A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative, AB positive, AB negative, O positive and O negative. The positive or negative sign next to the blood groups is known as the rhesus that is Rh. Rh factor the Rh factor is an inherited protein that can be found on the surface of the red blood cell. If your blood type is positive, then your blood cells have the Rh protein. If your blood type is negative, then your blood cells lack the Rh protein. Although Rh positive is the most common blood type, having an Rh negative type doesn't indicate illness and usually doesn't affect your health. Now, why is the Rh factor so important? The Rh factor is one of the proteins on RBCs used to indicate whether the blood of two different people is compatible when mixed, such as blood of a mother and her baby at birth. It is routine and important that the Rh factor for a mother and unborn child be determined during pregnancy. If an expecting mother is Rh negative and her baby is Rh negative, there aren't usually any concerns. Conversely, if the expecting mother is Rh negative and her baby is Rh positive, the mother's blood might produce the anti-D antibodies. The effect of these antibodies on the development of the unborn child who is Rh positive are determined by many factors. There are medical interventions that can be under supervision of a physician to protect the baby in the utero. The Rh factor is important to determine the blood donations and transfusions. A person with the Rh positive factor will not make anti-Rh antibodies. Those with Rh negative factor will produce the antibodies. Therefore, someone with Rh plus blood can receive both Rh plus and Rh minus transfusions, but those with Rh minus can only receive the Rh minus blood. Blood type and Rh factor screening are done not only to categorize, a blood categorize the blood donation. The Rh screening test result also allows a healthcare provider to, ad to give additional support to a patient if any kind of incompatibility is detected. Lastly, we have Linguistic Anthropology. Linguistic Anthropology is a branch of anthropology that studies the role of language in the social lives of individuals and communities. Linguistic Anthropology explores how language shapes communication. Language plays a huge role in social identity, group membership, and establishing cultural beliefs and ideology. So unlike linguists, linguistic anthropologists do not look at the language alone. Language is viewed as interdependent with culture and social structures. According to Pierre Paolo Gigioli, in language and social contexts, Anthropologists study the relation between worldviews, grammatical categories, and semantic fields, the influence of speech on socialization and personal relationships, and the interaction of linguistic and social communities. In this case, 
linguistic anthropology closely studies those societies where language defines a culture or society for example in new guinea there is a tribe of indigenous people who speak one language it is what makes that people unique it is its index language the tribe may speak other languages from new guinea but this unique languages gives the tribe its cultural identity linguistic anthropologists may also take an interest in language as it relates relates to socialization it can be applied to infancy childhood or a foreigner being encultured the anthropologist would likely study a society and the way that language is used to socialize its young in terms of a language's effect on the world the rate of spread of a language and its influence on a society or multiple societies is an important indicator that anthropologists will study for example the use of english as an international language can have wide ranging implications for the world societies this can be compared to the effects of colonization or imperialism and the import of language to various countries islands and continents all over the world anthropological linguists now this is a closely related field some say it is exactly the same however anthropological linguist linguistics investigates the relationship between language and culture from the linguistics perspective according to some this is a branch of linguistics this may differ from linguistic anthropology because linguists will focus more on the way words are formed for example the phonology or vocalization of the language to semantics and grammar systems for example linguists pay close attention to code switching a phenomenon that occurs when two or more languages are spoken in a region and the speaker borrows or mix languages in normal discourse a linguistic anthropologist may be interested in code switching as it affects society and evolving culture but will not tend to focus on the study of code switching which would be more of an interest to the linguists now we have the socio linguists socio linguistics very similarly socio linguistics considered another subset of linguistics is the study of how people use language in different social situations socio linguistics includes the study of dialects across a given region and an analytics or analysis of the way some people may speak to each other in certain situations for example at a formal occasion slang between family and friends or the manner speaking that may change based on the general gender roles additionally historical social linguists will examine language for shifts and changes that occur over time to a society for example in english a historical social linguistic will look at when thou shifted and was replaced by the word you in the language timeline